Hello, my name is Mandy Bright and I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Gosport Voluntary Action. Mary asked me to do a little video for uh, International Women's Day this year and so I wanted to share a few of my experiences with you. As I said, I'm currently working for Gosport Voluntary Action. I have been for the last five years or so, but I haven't always worked in the voluntary sector. I spent 27 years in the Royal Navy, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about some of the challenges that I encountered along the way. Now, I know that Commodore Mel is also speaking today, so I wanted to reassure you that what I've got to say isn't just about being in the Royal Navy. I hope you'll see it as relevant to all walks of life and the challenges that some of us will encounter uh, in our lifetimes. So I joined the Women's Royal Naval Service back in 1989. And the first thing to say is that at that time, the RENS, as it was known, was completely separate to the Royal Navy. Training of women took place at HMS Rally um, and it was separate to men. It wasn't until the recruitment of men started to become difficult that opportunities for women to serve at sea opened up. Uh, and in 1993, the RENS, as it was known, was disbanded and women were integrated fully into the Royal Navy. Some of the inequalities that uh, of opportunities that, that were in place at that time started to be put right. And actually, that's still ongoing today. Um, the most recent being um, the service of women submariners and um, as, as fighter pilots and various other opportunities that were never open to us before. So still work in progress, but um, we've come a long way. It was about 1994 that I decided I wanted to join the Royal Navy Police. At that time, it was a really male dominated environment. And on arrival on the first day of police training, I was the only woman in the class alongside 10 male colleagues. And I remembered feeling quite isolated and lonely at times. Um, I was accommodated separately, as you would expect, but completely separately, separate block from the men. And at night, the gents would all revise together, socialise together, and quite often would forget all about me. Um, and that was quite isolating. Now, by this time, I'd been in the Navy for six years and wasn't backwards in coming forwards. So I decided that I had to challenge this behaviour. Now, my I was experienced, I'd been in the Navy for six years, but my experience had been very different to the men. I'd worked in an all-female environment and I was very conscious that they had worked in an all-male environment. They'd never worked with women before, especially at sea. And I hadn't ever been to sea. Um, and so we were like, poles apart really so we had to find some common ground and obviously the new uh, training that we were undertaking and the new career that we were all embarking on was that common factor that I tried to seize upon um, so adapting to this new environment was a real challenge and not only did I have to grapple with the content of the course but it was a whole new way of life essentially there really was only one way that I was going to be able to get through it, and that was to totally immerse myself in it and rise to the challenge, no matter how alien that environment felt, how nervous I was or how shy I was about um, integrating. So as the boys were all sat in their dormitories, I decided I would knock on their door and go and join in the revision sessions I would tag along or turn up at the bar when they'd gone along and forgotten about me. And um, I also capitalised on the fact that I was a bit of a bookworm and I was doing quite well on the course. So I contributed to the success of the team by helping out anybody else that was struggling. And I eventually um, earned success uh, being selected as the top student on the course as a result so my endeavours really did pay off and everybody else passed too and um, I'd like to think in some small part that my um, support was due to that so 
I'd really stepped out of my comfort zone throughout that whole course and challenged myself. And um, I'm really pleased that I did. I went on to serve in many roles all over the UK and abroad and served at sea, which was another huge challenge. I became more confident with every new experience and gradually got promoted to become one of the Royal Navy Police Branch's 11 commissioned officers. At that time, uh, again, I was the only female officer, um, but I'm pleased to say that it didn't stay that way for long. And um, steadily more and more bright young women took the opportunity to reach their full potential. I was supported and encouraged by my boss at the time, who was a female lieutenant, and she saw my potential when I really couldn't see it for myself. And I owe her a great deal. It's great to have female role models that can, um, that can encourage and support and give a hand up to others. I also saw in her the type of person that I wanted to be. And I went on to help lots of talented young men and women um, to prepare for promotion through the ranks. And this was one of the most satisfying parts of my job. So the motto and the piece of advice that I gave to those that came after me is, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. And that's not a bad thing to bear in mind in these times. We're all capable of more than we think. So don't hold back. The next thing I'd like to talk about is my life now and my experience in the voluntary sector and the inequalities that working in this field has exposed. For many of us, life is comfortable. We have a home, a job, a family and enough money to get by. We exist within our own comfortable world, quite happily encountering the odd bump along the way, but coping and getting by. Working for Gosport Voluntary Action has made me see how lucky I am and how life is very different for others. In Gosport, there are some real areas of deprivation. Some areas such as the town ward are in the top 10% of the most deprived areas nationally. In Gosport, there isn't just financial deprivation, but also other measures such as lack of education skills and training and health deprivation. Those suffering from health inequalities are at risk of premature death and the impairment of the quality of life through their physical and mental health issues. The vast range of community groups that we have in Gosport make a huge difference to tackling inequalities and enriching the lives of local residents. Our food banks not only support those in crisis, but they actually help them to find sustainable ways of a better future, such as giving benefits advice and budgeting support. GVA's own advocacy service provides a voice for those suffering from disadvantage to help their voice be heard and to resolve their plights. A group called We Can Read helps adults with literacy problems, problems uh, to learn this valuable life skill that affects every area of their lives. These are all voluntary organisations. They're all uh, supported by people that give up their time for free to make a difference to the lives of others. And they're just a few examples. There are literally hundreds more. GVA has a responsibility to represent the voluntary sector and raise issues that affect it such as statutory uh, cuts to statutory services that impact on voluntary groups. We aim to ensure that the small and amazing groups around our borough um, have their voices heard and that their work is recognised and valued. Whether as individuals, as groups, volunteers or in our working lives, we can all choose to challenge rather than turning a blind eye or walking away from any type of inequality. If we do, we aim to make the world a better place for everyone. Thank you to Women for Women, um, an amazing group in Lee that I've had the pleasure of um, helping to get off the ground. Uh, I'm really pleased to be asked to do this and um, enjoy your International Women's Day and keep up the fantastic work. Thank you. Thank you.